you dropped out of college twice yeah what was the story there i'm like bro what do you want me to do like dump on tables when i see you see a new person like what what is it that you want me to slap you <laughs> 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 one week before leaving for russia i would start crying like uh-huh. just tears and tears and tears invariably i want to become not just one of the biggest youtubers in the country i want to become like one of the biggest youtubers in the world <laughs> i'm totally imagining karan johar listening to be, this and be like what rubbish yeah. <laughs> who is this guy <laughs> Sharon, welcome to Chuma Conversations. Yo, what's up, dude? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've, I've ever spoken to you like on normal call or anything, but uh, this is amazing that we are doing this right like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's start at the beginning. Yeah. I read somewhere that you were born and raised in Russia. Yeah. What was that like? That was weird. I keep telling my parents like you could have chosen any other country, but you had to choose Russia. uh so basically they they met there like my dad had gone there to work and my mom had gone there to study and then they met there two mm-hmm. malayalis met all the way in fucking russia and got married of course and, malayalis are everywhere uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then decided to have me so uh-huh. it was a it was a unique experience every time i say this to people people like they they take a second to like think like wow that is something different yeah Yeah and this would have been in the 1990s right soon after the fall of the Soviet Union Yeah 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 so yeah basically exactly at that time and like in Russia it was a point of like proper anarchy like mafia and like you know law enforcement being fully bribed and like things were really bad uh-huh. back then it was like the wild west but in Russia and uh-huh. then in the early 2000s things became normal like things So how long were you living there So I lived there for like 20 this also gives away my age but i've lived there for, for like 26 <laughs> 27 years really yeah yeah so i i always thought that you were there like as a child and then you moved back to india and you were in kochi all this time that was my dream my only dream in life was like so every time i used to come to kochi for holidays mm-hmm. uh, i used to have a lot i mean i have a lot of cousins here a lot of family my grandma everybody is in kochi so mm-hmm. every after two months i would cry like one week before leaving for russia i would start crying like uh-huh. just tears and tears and tears and my only wish in life was like because i would see my cousins and my friends that you know one day my parents would just move to india and then me aryan and them would just live in india and just live normally like a normal family but never happened uh-huh. but yeah uh uh-huh. so yeah. Uh, so you did your schooling in russia uh, what were you like in school So what was I like in school? Uh, <laughs> it depends how many of my <laughs> ex school members are going to watch this. Uh, I I was so initially I was a very shy kid. I was extremely mm-hmm. shy. So I think till like about like till second or third grade, I didn't know English properly. I would only speak in Malayalam. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, after that, I learned English, and then. Uh, then school school was a lot of fun like you know when you're in school and if you're an athletic kid you have a lot of fun you become popular just because you can run fast so mm-hmm. yeah that happened to me i i i'm pretty good at sports so like that okay. a school was good what, i was really bad at studies what did you play uh football cricket uh athletics like 100 meters 200 meters uh, relay coco mm-hmm. i like all sports except for badminton i kind of suck at i mean i also don't like sports i'm bad at <laughs> <laughs> so badminton i i suck at so i i don't really like it tennis uh-huh. uh yeah pretty much all sports but like football and athletics i i, I would really enjoy and mm-hmm. i used to be really bad at study so yeah it would kind of uh, make up for my lack of knowledge <laughs> so you were like the you were like the jock in school no? <laughs> yeah 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 but ex- except that jocks don't do really well after school so i don't want to be known as the jock <laughs> 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 jocks speak in school so i like the back then i felt really cool but now i'm like yeah that that was my past life i'm a man of education now mm, a man yeah. of culture <laughs> culture yeah yeah exactly is <laughs> in you gave this tedx speech where you mentioned that you dropped out of college twice yeah what was the story there i didn't know what the college process was like i didn't know that you had to when you were in 12th you had to apply for colleges 
like nothing when my friend used to apply i used to be like what the f- why, why are they why are they doing this now like i'm sure uh-huh. applying happens after you finish 12 so i never applied anywhere and then my goal was to study in bombay because there my then girlfriend was studying in bombay she was my okay. senior so i wanted to study uh-huh. with her and then i didn't get in get into that college i didn't get into zavier's basically mm. uh then i didn't ha- like by the time all the admissions had closed so i had to go to dubai and study study there for 6 okay. months and i was like uh, papa i can't do this i hate dubai i really want to get out of here uh-huh. so my i'm pretty spoiled as a child so my my parents are like okay if if it makes you happy that you want to study in india just go do that right. uh then i went to christ for two days and uh, christ two days to, yeah two days literally two days <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that must be some new sort of record uh, yeah <laughs> i was there for orientation day and the monday day and i was like fuck this this worst in school uh i also felt really sick in uh, bangalore that was one issue secondly all my friends at that time i'm not friends really with them anymore so i can say this mm-hmm. uh they were just pot heads which means like pot or smoke every single second of every single day which means when i would come mm-hmm. back home i like i don't smoke pot so mm-hmm. it would be like i'm entering a concentration camp and <laughs> and uh, and just the rules of christ like you know f- fucking wearing like long sleeve shirt and you can't grow your hair and yeah i was like i don't yeah. want to go back to school again so i left i went back to moscow and i finished my college there what did you study bba okay yeah i actually like if i had, if i given a choice i would never study after mm-hmm. school because i think it's it's like i i mean back then i, I didn't even know what i want to do but i genuinely believe it is a waste of time uh and like when every, when i finished my bba and all my friends had finished college with me they were like okay we are going for mba now and they're like you should also do an mba and i'm like fuck no i'm not wasting one more <laughs> second of my life like i don't know what i want to do but like i just don't think like i think the real world teaches you more than any college ever hmm. so i am also anti education <laughs> so anti pot anti education what else are you oh, very super, strongly against super anti pot uh, uh i'm the only one who can uh, i don't know about other creators i'm sure they come out and say pot is bad but they also smoke pot in their homes in the comfort uh-huh. of their homes but i can definitely say 100% like drugs is a big no no uh, you mentioned about how much you love football and i kind of saw that in your very first youtube video was you playing football and it's titled footy yeah. it was uploaded 13 years ago that's 2010 yeah. i'm sure i had like a dial up connection then not even like regular <laughs> internet <laughs> how, how did you view youtube when you first started putting out videos so youtube for me was just to watch it was for two things primarily to uh, watch cristiano ronaldo highlights mm-hmm. like i would watch it day and night like i mm. got good at football not because i played football a lot it's also because i just like watched it so much and i visualized it and then i would go on the pitch and i would practice mm. but like it was like coming back from school and just watching youtube 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 of just cristiano ronaldo nothing else um and secondly to hear eminem songs uh oh so so that so that video i think the audio is cut off because like it has it has hit copyright but technically it has an eminem song and me doing football tricks so it it was a culmination of my youtube <laughs> uh, <laughs> gods to coming together uh-huh. um but i would just view youtube as a place where i would watch football like i would mm. i have like for the longest time i didn't know about any youtube creators i didn't even like youtube creators i wouldn't i i still can't for the life of me understand why somebody would like watch other people creating content on youtube now i watch stuff but i still mm-hmm. don't understand why other people watch it <laughs> Okay do you watch it more as like a learning experience of okay this is something i can try to use in my content as well Yeah i mean i guess when you become a creator you start to analyze things when you especially when mm-hmm. you see content i don't analyze it when i see short form content because i don't like short form content i mean even though that's where i started off from uh i don't know who told me but so, somebody told me that youtube is like youtube is serious like mm-hmm. instagram you can or tiktok you can blow up and then you can be relevant and then you can disappear i mean the same thing can happen on youtube but yeah. to make it on youtube you need to like really get your shit together and you need to really love this because it is a fuck ton of work uh yeah. so and like like there are certain things i learned like you know like all the big youtube creators use like really nice cameras they don't use phones mm. i mean phones there's a charm to it but like you need to invest in your gear so for mm-hmm. after like 2 years of creating content i switched to a fucking fat ass camera who which like i lug around everywhere and mm. everybody makes fun of me but yeah 
so yeah so yeah so like things like that i learned and mm-hmm. like like on youtube there's so much to learn like how to hook a person's attention and how to keep them watching and like there's just so much analytics involved that i really enjoy watching other people's videos also yeah yeah, yeah that's it's interesting you mentioned that because when i first saw your content i thought like oh my god here's an indian logan paul because it was crazy chaotic and most importantly those clickbaity titles yeah. so i was wondering like was that kind of a playbook that you followed when you started off no nope. that's the funny thing i get called a lot of names <laughs> but <laughs> funnily enough i have never watched in, like i have watched uh, i have watched some of them but like i was never a fan of theirs or i never thought oh fuck i could replicate this because technically mm-hmm. you cannot replicate it it's very hard right. it just happened by chance because i used to initially make videos with my grandmom and then i didn't want to be boxed into the category of just making videos with my grandmom mm-hmm. so then i started making videos with my friends and invariably by making videos with my friends these like the clickbait titles and like the thumbnails and the action packed videos happened it just happened very mm-hmm. naturally <laughs> uh, it, it's all like i sat one day and i thought about the fuck this is what i need to do i don't think that's possible <laughs> uh-huh. and you mentioned like like your videos are a lot of fun to watch especially the ones that you have with your friends because what else would uh, you say you <laughs> no it is, it is this compliment <laughs> i'm telling you because i used to i remember there was one phase i think during the lockdown where you used to release the this is not a vlog like a 50 second of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. where you you and your friends would do like different games like who could reach this place the fastest yeah, could yeah, eat yeah. win a burger or something yeah, or yeah. that that dropping game where you have to look at each other etc yeah, yeah. see i watch your content share <laughs> <laughs> thanks actually thank thank you so but, much but uh, it is a lot of fun because it's a something that you can do with your own friends and be your kind of kind of part of your friends group without actually being part of your friends group and i also noticed that's a very common comment in your comment section where everyone's yeah. like hi how can i sign up to be your friend yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how can someone become your friend like what's the criteria i mean i mean just just be a fun person if you if you are ready to do fun things it's mm-hmm. easy to get into this group like we always try to meet new people that way mm-hmm. uh sometimes it's daunting for the person who is meeting us because you know their one person is meeting like eight people at the same time right. so they take some time to get warm like warm up to us but for example like i am a very shy introverted person but like i have solved that problem because i have six of my friends with me always mm. like no matter which social setting i go like i have been in social settings in the last like six months where i've been alone and i'm just like standing in the corner <laughs> because i'm like <laughs> i'm extremely introverted uh, so yeah so You, we love to meet new people and we love to i also so i see my friends as characters in my vlogs obviously they're my friends but they're also my mm. characters in my tv show basically so i'm mm-hmm. the i'm the director and this is my tv show so it's really fun to see somebody we meet for the first time how they evolve on even on camera so you guys right. will all be able to see it like yeah. the first day this person will be extremely shy and they don't want to be in front of the camera to like day 60 where they are like fucking going crazy in front of the camera uh-huh. so you can actually see the evolution of different people going through that at different times. Mm. So that's a lot of fun to watch. And plus yeah, we love to meet new people like I I always want new people to hang out with and shoot with. So yeah. It's easy. How did how did you meet your co-group of friends? Was it uh, because you were in Moscow and then you came yeah. to India? Yeah. So Balu is my oldest friend. He mm-hmm. uh he I knew him from Russia itself. So his family was also in Russia. Okay. Uh Shamri I knew her from 2008. She used to live in the same building as my cousin so when I used to come down for holidays I used to see her and then we became friends. Gayu I met her through like Instagram and like 5 6 years back uh just like Cochin is a very small place so mm-hmm. met her like that like she was my cousin's friend met her like that. <laughs> and then like yeah just from there like all like these are friends of mine for a long time now so Yeah. Agram Agram is my uh So I initially I wanted to become an actor. Um, okay. And Agram is the is the first person I ever said that to because I was so shy to say this to anyone. Uh-huh. And Agram is like a it's like he's like a chief motivating officer. He'll motivate you till you die. Uh <laughs> he's that friend who will motivate anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh so he's the first friend of mine who's like literally edited my first videos, helped me out to shoot because I had no idea how to do any of these things. Mm-hmm. So he's like a driving force of what we have ended up doing in life so yeah but oh, these are all, all my old friends like yeah you mentioned that you wanted to become an actor mm. uh do you still want to y- yes i want to and uh, this might sound like i'm 
arrogant but i want to do it in my own terms like i don't mm-hmm. want to go for like audition after audition and see like the only thing i don't like about acting is um you're waiting for someone to give you a chance at the end of the day right uh, you know you could be the most talented actor in the world but some director some producer some casting agent has to see you and be like oh fuck this is the guy and that doesn't sit well with me because at that at that point of my life i didn't have forever to wait so i had to get yeah. going because i'd seen so many people try this for so many years and you see people who are like 40 and they're, they're still trying and hmm. it, it's it, it's endearing to watch that drive but it's also sad to see you know how far they have waited hmm. so i was like that's just not the personality i am i don't want to i don't like waiting and i don't want anyone to give me a chance so i just want to make this happen so i'm 100% sure that like now my even my thing has changed that i enjoy being behind the camera so much that i want to create a show with me and mm. my friends uh which happens on my own terms another thing i always wanted is when you are in a movie set you are always working with people you don't know Mm-hmm. So it was my dream to work with only people I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just make a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, just make a lot of friends, and like we have all the all the you know factors to make uh, a movie or a TV show. Like my brother Arjun is literally good at everything. So mm-hmm. he's like, so his dream in life is to become like a one man production house. And when I thought okay. of it, I thought it was crazy, but it's becoming a one man production house. Like there's nothing the kid can't do. Mm-hmm. uh so yeah so we just have a team of people who can create a show if one day and then we can all act it that's yeah. the goal it'll happen 100% uh it just it just depends on when but that's my acting dreams for now like i want to act in my own show or if something yeah. really if karan johar comes tomorrow i won't say no to him <laughs> <laughs> well, he has to he has to come <laughs> oh he has to come too yeah i'm going to him <laughs> I, now now my goal in life is so that this so that we become big enough that this interview reaches karan johar and he's like oh who the fuck is this guy who mm. talks shit like this but yeah but he has to come okay <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally imagining Karan Johar listening to this and be like, "What rubbish! Yeah. <laughs> Who is this guy?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, hopefully, one day. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> your in in your vlogs, your you seem like this very like loud, outgoing, like full of energy person. But you know, you you said how you're actually very shy and introverted. So, what are you like? Who is Sharon Nair off camera? I mean obviously with my close friends that's exactly how I am mm-hmm. uh but like if if I'm in a setting where I'm with new people and I am very quiet I am very shy like there have been a lot of events where my friends wouldn't be able to come and if I had mm-hmm. to go I would try not to go maximum and if I still had to go <laughs> I would just be like a mouse in the corner like I I'm very shy like I would never try to go make conversation and like it's very hard for me to do that uh so so you much have, so, mm-hmm. so much so that like this used to happen a lot initially because when i used to make my videos and stuff and some of my earlier videos was just me alone or just my grandma or more. so when people would come up to me they'd be like fuck you're the same guy but you're not the same guy <laughs> and, <laughs> and that used to make me feel bad for a while and uh-huh. then i'm like bro like now if somebody does say that to me like i'm also way more comfortable with people approaching me because like i'm more used to it but i'm like bro mm-hmm. what do you want me to do like jump on tables when i see you see a new person like what what is it that you want me to slap you <laughs> <laughs> like how do that i that would be a good surprise <laughs> yeah like how do i how do i bring the sharan nairness that you speak of like i'm the same guy just that i don't run around and do stupid things all the time so just just get used to it <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. Do you have do you have any tips for people who I mean you've been in social situations where you've had to socialize but like being a shy person do you have any tips on how you can force yourself at least in that moment to be social? Uh yeah so I mean I get, just putting yourself in uncomfortable situations all the time just generally helps. Um mm-hmm. uh, for for me and for Agrim and stuff like Agrim is a very social person so actually fuck Agrim. uh but <laughs> like, but like even the kind of videos we do like when we survived mm-hmm. 24 hours in bangalore uh without any money we mm-hmm. ended up meeting a lot of new people which means mm-hmm. that you know those interactions like that matter like the more you have interactions with people you don't know and you cultivate that then you'll be able to approach uh people my mm-hmm. problem is just that i 
on the flip side of my problem is that i'm so comfortable because i always have like my very close friends around me that i don't feel like doing it because i don't do that for a long time and then suddenly if i find myself in a place i'm like fuck <laughs> uh so ideally i would just like all of them around all the time yeah. oh yeah but i but i can do it i can like like i i always tell myself that i have a switch uh mm-hmm. like i like sometimes i'm standing at the corner i'm like dude you're sharan nayar just like just fucking get your shit together like <laughs> <laughs> you need that's to talk good, to this person yeah yeah that's a good motivation <laughs> yeah bro yeah. Yeah. You're Sharan Nair. You are you. <laughs> somebody will somebody will be like who the fuck are you nobody. <laughs> But yeah. You you must be vlogging a lot because you're very active on YouTube and like you mentioned like YouTube takes a lot of work and I would imagine like all that filming, editing all of that that would take a lot of time. Uh but coming to the filming part of it, you're vlogging a lot. right uh how do you manage to maintain that balance between work and personal life i actually don't have a balance okay. i'm just i'm just working all the time <laughs> most uh-huh. of the time mm-hmm. i am in every situation constantly thinking will this be a bit so i call it bits so each vlog consists of many bits so right. for me i'm constantly thinking like i i can see two people have a conversation and if it peaks my interest i'm like okay this is suddenly entering vlog territory i will take my camera out right. uh, so i am constantly working clearly <laughs> yeah yes yes sorry sorry about that uh but like for the amount of videos that i put out especially on youtube and like my vlogs are not like they're not slow paced vlogs they're fast paced vlogs yeah. which mm-hmm. means i need to shoot a lot and then a lot of it doesn't make it but like i still need that backup uh, so i i end up shooting a lot are you ever able to like live in the present and enjoy no. the moment i mean i enjoy the moment like like for me a party where my friends are partying or we go for a party that's like prime work time for me <laughs> but like i i just know like it's almost like god gifted this to me because mm-hmm. there were a lot of times when i used to go for like i don't enjoy parties but now that i have a camera and i know that moments are going to happen and really funny shit is going to happen in front of me i fucking love parties i also don't drink mm-hmm. so i'm always sober uh but like having a camera around uh it's it's so much fun to capture these moments that dude 10 years later you will remember what you did on like 25th may when you got shit faced because of me <laughs> <laughs> so, are you sure someone would want to remember that <laughs> <laughs> well they have no choice <laughs> <laughs> so like suddenly i am having a lot of fun at parties or suddenly mm-hmm. another thing dude so in like yeah people might think that i don't have a life but like i actually have more of a life now because like i'm also very i used to like growing up and like even now i am a very scared person like i'm scared of the dark i'm scared of snakes i'm scared of disease i'm scared of death i'm scared of everything okay uh-huh. i'm scared of like adventure sports but bro you tell me like you put me in a cage with a fucking anaconda and but uh-huh. you say you have a camera and we can record this i will do it <laughs> you'd I, be perfect on fear factor <laughs> yeah i might die i might fucking die but if you tell me that i can record this i'd be like okay fine i can do anything <laughs> i can do anything. and that has changed my perception a lot for example like one year back i i hit my head and i had a really bad head injury okay um, but that evening we were supposed to vlog like we were supposed to go for a party so we ended up not going for the party but i still got up 3 hours later and i'm like i need to get out of the house because i want to shoot something mm-hmm. because i'm like this gives me the force to live more <laughs> not live less <laughs> <laughs> and like dude even like so i smashed my head and i'm fucking crying and like i thought i'm going to die and then we reached the place where you know we reached the hospital and they're stitching me up and it was they were like the the people were really nice there Yeah. So I was like Shavani why would you just record this and then the pain uh-huh. the pain becomes bearable because I'm like I'm capturing this stuff yeah and be like ah yeah. like, yeah. I'm a brave boy <laughs> yeah I sound like a, I sound like a psychopath but yeah that's that's my life no it makes sense it's I think I was discussing this with another creator recently it's called the creator brain where you can't kind of switch off like everything around you you see as content and like in my case i would like if i have an idea i can write it down but in your case you have to take your camera out and shoot it yeah. um have there ever ever been moments where you've had to tell yourself like no like turn off the creator brain for this never, moment never see my 
so i mean it's it's i mean it would be nice to do that but mm-hmm. i i just don't think i have the time because uh my goal see i genuinely i like i genuinely love making youtube videos it's not because i want to like i think there's a certain element of me becoming you know, an actor that you know i wanted the fame i wanted the money here i don't give a fuck about any of those things i love like dude i sit and watch my own videos a lot at night <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like i am my shaun is shaun's favorite content creator mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh so and i'm not seeing this as content i'm seeing this as a visual diary where me and my friends are having fun so mm-hmm. dude like i don't remember half my vlogs but i'll i'll click on one randomly and i'll be like fuck that day we did this bro what the fuck i can't believe we did yeah. this so it's a constant like a memory pool but like i can see what happened that day so and invariably i want to become not just one of the biggest youtubers in the country i want to become like one of the biggest youtubers in the world so mm-hmm. for that i can't switch on my creator brain i have to switch it, switch the shit out for like how many ever years it takes and and it's for me it's not that easy simply because i don't like my like just from the business aspect of things i don't create content in hindi so like mm-hmm. the hindi belt doesn't really like all the biggest youtubers in india are at least hindi speaking yeah. uh which is why like i don't want to be known just in india i'm moving to dubai next month uh <gasps> oh congratulations yeah. thank you so the whole plan of moving there is that i want to make like videos from like another country and i want to capture like different markets like i want a kid in sri lanka to watch me and i want a kid in like denmark to watch me mm-hmm. like okay because the story at the end of the day is like six seven friends and like parents and it's it's like it's like mm-hmm. a it's like family basically so that you can relate to anywhere anywhere like you know and that's why we subtitle everything we don't speak regional languages much even if we do we subtitle them mm-hmm. uh so that's the goal so unfortunately i mean i don't know maybe i will just die some day doing this but uh, <laughs> but creator brain cannot be switched off ever <laughs> i don't know for me it's not even creator brain for me it is just brain <laughs> like i don't there's no separation it's become between, a part of you yeah, yeah there's no separation between creator and uh, human being there's this there's this one yeah one <laughs> entity so why dubai though dubai because it's a hub uh you know you can travel in many different places from there a b mm. dubai like uae itself is a content creator it's a it's the country sees itself as a content creator like every week they have one museum which opens one mm. oh guys come there's a fun ride oh we built the tallest building so the country <laughs> views itself as a it's a as a content creator so it facilitates content creation so much mm. uh it's just so much more th- things happening like dude we live in i mean i live in cochin and right now like compared to back when we started off like we have more money to spend on like making videos and stuff right. but but it's still hard because like there's nothing happening in kochi <laughs> there's fucking nothing happening <laughs> but then in that way there's nothing happening anywhere like like it, for us recording vlogs is also not very easy for example okay there's a really big concert like justin bieber's performing in bombay hmm you can go for the concert but it, there's no guarantee that you will get content because audio is an issue yeah because conversation etc and india is mm-hmm. loud everywhere like fucking auto like the two <laughs> things i hate is autos and those what is that uh, royal enfield bikes oh, because they oh bro it just like ruins videos so so there's not much like i mean there is a lot to do in india uh, but like dubai we'll have a lot more content to shoot on a daily basis Mm-hmm. um and like i like to have the backup because otherwise it'll eat me up that you know one day i'll wake up and i'll have to edit and i don't have enough videos uh because <laughs> i also don't miss like i do three videos a week and that's yeah. a shit ton of videos that's a lot that's yeah, a that's lot a- of work <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> are any of your friends moving to dubai with you yeah shamini is moving to dubai with me mm-hmm. uh i think i think so far that's the plan but i already have friends in dubai uh plus like i just switching base to dubai i i still want to travel around and like wherever aryan is and wherever gayu is and like the idea is to not stick to one place just move bases but having right. kochi as a base is like it's not possible after a point right yeah. but i'm very excited to to see how your content evolves from yeah, the room did you should they will be same thing only <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about? Oh, I've been doing the same thing for a while. I need to change things up, etc. Sometimes I do feel. Sometimes I do feel. Uh, but like, it's just who I am as a personality. Like, 
before these videos were being recorded also i used to pull the same pranks on my friends i would pull the same pranks on my parents like there's nothing like my <laughs> my happiness only comes from irritating the people i love <laughs> <laughs> so like i haven't changed much in that respect mm. yeah just that i carry a camera around also yeah and we can all see it happen yeah yeah <laughs> exactly uh what do you think is something people und- what do you think people misunderstand about you mm misunderstand i mean this is also a misunderstanding i like people think my mm-hmm. life is very easy but that's mm-hmm. that's the whole point i want people to think like i i every moment of every day i want everybody to think fuck i want sharanaya's life uh-huh. uh i mean not knowing what sharanaya is actually going through uh, or how hard this is uh, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day you're a, you're an entertainer you don't like nobody needs to know what you're going through like like you know i hear a lot of i get it get it so much trouble for saying this but like you know everybody has sad stories but like nobody really cares about your sad story they just want videos of the internet to edit it themselves like uh-huh. so yeah so i mean that's a misunderstanding my life is not perfect but mm-hmm. but that's not for them to know i created this idea that you know my life is really fun and i it's my work so and i think another mr saying that this is easy uh, mm-hmm. because how hard could it be but but it's not that easy it's, it's not especially youtube videos <laughs> editing all that footage together and creating <laughs> that storyline through it making sure audio is fine yeah 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 it's a lot of fun. but it, yeah but it also like it's like you you go to the gym right so when i used to i remember when i used to upload every alternate day on instagram i used to be like fuck this is so much work mm. and now when i'm uploading on youtube i'm looking back at the times i used to upload on instagram like bro that was nothing so that yeah. means i've kind of got fitter in the creative world like you know i've i've become more efficient at what i do mm. uh, and like just like uploading three videos gives you a lot of self belief every week that like, okay you can do this you can do this you can do this so mm-hmm. yeah so that way it, it helps how how do you manage to keep that motivation to keep putting out three videos every week because it's not easy just the motivation that i i really want to be the biggest youtuber in the world like i mm-hmm. like like i want a show on like a ott platform i want uh and motivation in the sense that i really love making these videos like like the only part of it i really don't like is the, before i start editing mm-hmm. because i keep procrastinating and uh-huh. then once i start editing like i go into the zone where i just have to finish the entire edit and then only i can come out so basically mm-hmm. i have to fill up 4 minutes of a vlog yeah. mm. if i finish breach 4 minutes then i can stop okay. uh but like but i love that process once it starts only process i don't like is that oh my god i have to edit 4 minutes and like <laughs> but dude like i think i must have done like 200 of these just these videos uh, mm-hmm. after i switched from instagram so i've kind of got better at it so yeah the motivation i like, i mean there are days when i'm not motivated but i'm like i always like i'm also really into like motivational stuff mm-hmm. so like selves like the people i really look up to michael phelps ronaldo bolt uh they all say that you know to the reach the level like the only difference between like good and great is the great people do things even when they really don't want to mm. so nothing is nobody is going to fucking lose one night sleep or like nobody's life is going to change if i don't upload three times a week not even yeah. i don't even think my life is going to change but i'm like it's the principle in your head that you made a promise to yourself that it's three times so no matter how hard it is uh just do it nice Yeah. I'm curious why do you have a 4 minute um limit to your vlogs is there a reason So I always wanted the vlogs to be short uh mm-hmm. so I was thinking like how many minutes to make it so 1 and 2 seem 1 2 and 3 seem too short 5 seem too long uh so I was like let me just breach the 4 minute mark and then I'll keep it that much like I never I n- I don't want to do long videos the whole idea of the video is to make like you finish the video and you're like fuck now i have to wait another two days to watch oh okay yeah, yeah you want to have that audience curiosity yeah, and community yeah, build yeah. up and also like like i also don't have patience like i don't personally don't have the patience to watch anything which is more than 5 minutes mm. uh so i don't want to put anyone else through that 
if even if they have the patient <laughs> as we are talking on a podcast that has been gone for 35 <laughs> no, 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 minutes <laughs> no, no. no i don't mean, dude no i really, really want to get into podcasting also but that, see that's a slower format right so when a person decides to listen to a podcast they are either driving or they are like they are ready to sit down and watch something on the tv like they know that they are investing that much time that's mm-hmm. fine but most times on youtube people are like they just quickly want to watch something when they are having lunch and then they want to leave mm-hmm. uh, so then 4 minutes works but i love long form like i love podcasts i it's, love it's okay sharon it's okay no we are sta- bad <laughs> no i started we are starting a podcast soon, so i'm i'm saying even for personally i love podcasts <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've you've made what over 1000 posts on instagram you've yeah. had 360 videos on youtube yeah. is there any content you regret making nah not at all I love every single video I made. I mean I might look back at something and I might be like fuck this was lame. But I was <laughs> like I really thought it was cool back then. So first of all out of those 1000 uh, posts on Instagram like 600 photos are test traps. So <laughs> uh, so that's not counted but no I don't really like I feel like that's the only way you grow like uh, mm. I in 3 years time I need to look back at the vlogs I was creating now and be like fuck that was so like stupid. but that's mm. growth that doesn't mean that i stopped doing what I, i'm doing right now because what i'm doing right now when i look back at the stuff i was doing 3 years back i'm like okay that that's kind of lame but like that's growth for you but like how what yeah yeah please go ahead no no go on no i don't know what i was going to say <laughs> <laughs> i was going to ask you about i mean you have this growth mindset when it comes to creating content and trying as much as you can and being consistent yeah. so how do you view analytics and numbers when it comes to reflecting how your content has been doing so on youtube i spend a lot of time looking at my analytics but i uh, it, this is not an easy thing to do but i try my best not to be not to be affected by the analytics yeah. uh, in the sense that uh, the number of people who watches your stuff doesn't really tell you if the video is good or bad uh, that is okay. all like there are so many external factors whether youtube is pushing your stuff whether a lot of people are coming to your page etc 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 so that's another reason where why people who survive on youtube really survive for a long time because you need a really thick skin because there have been times in my life and i've got 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 which is like 10 out of 10 means you know what that is no what's that so for for example when you upload a video on youtube uh, it'll show you how it's doing with your other nine videos which you have uploaded before that oh okay at the same time for example 32 minutes later they will show you okay this video is doing ninth but there were eight videos doing better than what the same video but they are comparing to your own videos hmm so when you see 10 out of 10 means this is the shittiest video of the last 10 videos and bro this <laughs> goes on for weeks It's like YouTube telling you quit, fucking quit. Your views are dropping. Your views are dropping. And uh, like, I had a time in like, I think last year, and I still go through this. It's like a stock market, but like, I go through this where it gets ten out of ten. And some videos which I really love, ten out of ten. I'm like, fuck you, YouTube. But like, well, you just gotta stick to it. Like uh-huh. next day, edit again and upload. Uh, so analytics that. So I use analytics for like to see how many people are. Uh, you know watching your stuff after the first 30 seconds so what right. the hook is like uh, mm-hmm. should i change up the hook should i so there are different types of bits in my head so what can kind i of bits to put uh, what the viewer retention rate is uh, to see how long people are watching and whether would they want a shorter bit or a longer bit etc or what kind of bit they want mm-hmm. uh, but i just views wise or just subscribers wise i mean i have a very small youtube page and views i have a nice ratio of views to the number of subscribers i have which mm-hmm. i value but like but otherwise just views to see the number of people who watch like some videos do really bad and then you're like fuck this i don't want to do youtube that that, that i don't feel mm. i'm like that means people are bad taste it's their problem <laughs> <laughs> i like the self confidence that you have <laughs> yeah, you, you have to build it there's nobody else is going to build it for you no you so if you want to survive in this world you you must have that <laughs> how i how did I, you develop this self confidence and like this feeling of self assurance that no matter what happens externally you will keep at your path so i didn't always have this 
but a i think it's very important the kind of heroes you choose for example my biggest hero is ronaldo and he's always extreme like that's what he's known for and like there is no other way like you can cry about it and say you're bad at this or you can just be assured about yourself and just do your best and see what happens i also another thing is like a lot of creators go through this because like they are all single creators right so they go through these ups and downs where they don't really have anyone to depend on and like maybe their other yeah. friends don't understand what they're going and i've seen that happen but like i'm very lucky in the sense that a lot of my friends are creators like my close friends people i work with are creators so yeah. dude there are days when i'll be like in the dumps and i'm like i can't do this anymore and then shamli a guy will be like you know what let's do this today and then they mm. will pick you up and if agram is feeling like that then we will pick him up so it's it's a constant circle of somebody feeling down and then us picking them up so then you understand that you have people backing you and then if you have people backing you like like yeah no yeah. like i like this video hasn't even after happened yet there's a video i'm going to shoot on sunday mm-hmm. and two of my friends are flying from dubai because i asked them to come so i'm like i am the luckiest person in the world if two of my, like i feel like crying sometimes but like if I, i'm like if two of my friends can come to india for a youtube video and they're not like billionaires or anything so if anybody's going to comment saying rich spoiled kids fuck you guys uh, but <laughs> but they're just coming because they're like okay he wants us there it's a youtube video so it's something they will like but still you know coming traveling from another country just for the weekend because they are, they are working in a, like mm. a company So I'm like if if you have people like this believing in what you do and they love you so much then then just be confident dude there's nothing else <laughs> Yeah I don't know if you realize how lucky you are to have that friend circle who's so I'm, supportive I've, also like, your family as well Yeah I'm fucking lucky that way that's word I mean I, there are also times when I'm very ungrateful uh because I get so many things the you know you fall into a habit that when you hear a no you get really like i get really triggered mm-hmm. and then my close people will be like bro you have no idea how lucky you are like the people who love you like they really love you so just like shut the fuck up <laughs> and then <laughs> you know there's like shamri will sometimes knock sense into me but i didn't knock sense into me so that way yeah, i'm mm-hmm. i'm very lucky and uh, se- like the self belief and the confidence also comes in like achieving your targets like mm-hmm. if you I know it is hard to upload 3 videos a week. I know it's hard and then every day I upload every week I upload that in my head I'm like there's nothing which is which can stop me. Like I don't care if the world is coming down and tomorrow the internet will get cut off and there will be like an alien invasion I'm uploading. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have your camera ready for those yeah, aliens though. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you are, so like when you have that commitment that self belief comes from the amount of work you put. It's not just like just confidence or some people see it as arrogance it's not that it's it's actually very humble it's just that mm-hmm. it's cultivated from the amount of work you do hmm yeah nice i think you've made your own motivational video right here yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so you've lived in cochin for a while now yeah. what are three things people must definitely do whenever they visit don't go to fort cochin and the banale everybody does that i'm kidding you should do that <laughs> you should do that <laughs> go to the banale in fort cochin the go to fort cochin actually it's very beautiful uh it's a beautiful place to explore there's the, there are really nice people there there are really mm-hmm. nice shops really nice places to eat the beach uh, and just the art uh then obviously go to panampranagar because that's where i live so go to panampranagar because that best panampranagar is the best place in the world it's just uh-huh. one road with like houses here and there but like panampranagar is home to me actually don't visit panampranagar <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> have you ever had people come up like trying to find where your house is based on what they see in your vlogs it's really funny that you asked me this because it happened today morning for the first time ever and i have always wanted this to happen but when it happened i'm like this is kind of fucked up it happened today though okay. like you texted me at uh, 12 o'clock Indian time uh-huh. and I yeah. get up really late so I was planning to get up this half an hour before this uh-huh. uh, so I got a like the bell rang at 11 o'clock and I hate people coming in the morning like it generally I'm not a morning person bell uh-huh. rang I opened the door and there was a boy he's already leaving so I was like what what like what happened he's like I'm your fan I came because I saw your car's number plate and i was like this is really fucked up oh no <laughs> this is really like i was so happy also because i mean 
invariably when you're like at 100 followers you think about a day when people you know are hunting yeah. you down because because they love your work but i was like this is also so fucked up i'm like how the fuck did my security allow this to happen uh-huh. downstairs and I, then he realized that you know he has done a mistake so he's like i'm sorry i'm sorry i leave I said, yeah, thank mm-hmm. you. And also, I just woke the bro and just like fucking like saliva <laughs> everywhere. Like, morning. <laughs> like, I think that the, the boy got a little more freaked out yeah, than you yeah, did. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I'm leaving. I was like, okay, thank you. Uh, and I was like, please don't do this. And he's like, no, no, I won't, I won't, I won't. And then I was going to close the door and he's like, so can I have a selfie? And I'm like, fuck, I look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but did you first, take it? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> God, I love the fame <laughs> dude somebody came to my house <laughs> how cool is that till it becomes bad like yeah I must yeah. be I should be scared if, when I'm entering the house at night and stuff but yeah it's okay anyway you're... actually you're... I was gonna say anyway you're leaving but I also know that there are a lot of people who are fans of your parents yeah yeah that's another beautiful thing with the kind of stuff we do because it's not just me like my parents my mom will be stopped on the road and be like Oh, we really love your stuff. <laughs> my, mom <laughs> like, my mom is the shyest person in the world. So she will find it so awkward and she'll be like, yeah, this is not for me. Like, I don't know what to do. But my dad enjoys it. Uh-huh. My dad is like, oh, they recognize me on the flight. <laughs> oh, this girl yeah. came. And, I was wearing a mask and this girl still recognized me. I was like, congratulations. <laughs> One thing I found very interesting from this conversation is that you mentioned you don't drink alcohol. You don't smoke pot. And my impression of you from watching your vlogs and your content was that you are this huge, <laughs> crazy party animal. <laughs> so people, think I, people think I snort cocaine all the time. So yes, I, I, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> so uh, was there a reason why you decided not to drink alcohol and not smoke pot? So I say, uh, like I'm super anti-drugs. Like mm. I just think drugs are just, just to set it out, just fucking stupid. Mm. Uh, there will be people who smoke pots who say that, you know, I like my world just becomes karma and like I become more creative. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You want to be creative? Just like fucking do your job. You don't have mm. to, need, you don't need pot for that. Like when you were in fourth standard and you want to do a drawing, you didn't have pot, right? So now what, <laughs> what changed? Uh, <laughs> I can see you sweat, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, what? The, the comparison to doing a drawing in fourth grade. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm like, I'm like, I don't think your creativity depends on a drug. Like that, then you shouldn't be a creative. Like that's what my like. I could this could be. That's just my opinion. Alcohol, on the other hand, uh, I once tried to drink a beer in ninth grade. Uh, got caught by my mom. Uh, she cried a lot. She fucking grounded me for three months. And uh, after that, I never really, I never drank alcohol after that. Although my friend, my my friends, and especially my parents think I'm the most boring person. Because I don't drink and they all drink. So they're like, please, can you drink? Please, it'll be fun. Well, I'm like, nah. Also, I have this. So man, so 11th and 12th, I studied in uh, Cochin. I studied in Choice. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, in high school, you like you always look up to your seniors. So they slowly start drinking because they're 17, 18. And like, they're also experimenting. Mm. So the 9th, 10th graders also experiment. And so when I was in 11th, I just remember I had just joined Choice. And... Uh, I had a friend of mine who came up to me and said, we'll, I'll see you at Sandy's. So I said, what is Sandy's? So she said, it's a hookup place. So I said, mm-hmm. why the fuck would I go to a hookup place? So she's like, because we all go to smoke hookah there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I said, but I don't smoke hookah. So and when I said, I don't smoke hookah, she just laughed at me. She like laughed really loudly for like okay. a good 30 seconds. And she's like, ha, 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 you, you think you're such a good boy? Uh, I will see you there in three months. Uh-huh. And then it, that kind of, like I took that personally. I was like, really, you think I would do that in three months? And they never like I was like yeah fuck you <laughs> I'm not like everybody else I, I won't do this so, yeah. huh? it's kind of wow. yeah a- an unlikely role model for teenagers <laughs> out there <laughs> yeah. yeah I never thought of it like that <laughs> <laughs> oh nice this is really interesting oh let's go to fan question shall we oh, sure yes okay so Yogesh asks uh, what does Sharan's dad do and why is he called Loko Raju? So my dad's a businessman in Russia, Moscow. Mm-hmm. He has restaurants there. Uh, his most famous one being Darbar. It's an Indian restaurant. Uh, he's called Loko Raju because uh, he will do anything we ask him to do. 
So, mm-hmm. so there was this Key and Peele sketch, I think, many many years back, where one of the characters was loco something. So we mm-hmm. were make this is way before we used to create content, and we were shooting some funny, really funny video on Snapchat, just like fucking around with my friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so ah, so we used to do this thing where like there used to be a friend, there, there's a friend of mine called Karun. So me and Karun are talking. Karun will be like, like you know, in Malayalam you say Ninda Tanda, which is like your dad. Like mm-hmm. fuck, it's like a fuck you to your dad, basically. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a bad colloquial thing. So what I would do is I would take the like he would send it to me on Snapchat. I would take the Snapchat and I would show this to my dad. Hmm. Say look what he said about you. <laughs> then I would make my dad respond to that and like Karul will fucking laugh. Uh. Uh, so that's so technically he's the one who said this guy is loco man. He's loco Raju. So it just stuck from there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so 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 again, my dad is a very like. Uh, Power boy has been the moment he has alcohol in the system. He just flips. Uh, he becomes, becomes the loco raju. Yeah, he becomes loco raju. It's basically his alter ego. So loco raju, loco raju comes out once in a while. My my mom loves raju but hates loco raju. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a nickname as well at home? No, she doesn't. No, she just mama. She oh. just yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Second question. Sharath asks, "What's the best and worst thing about working with Netflix?" There's nothing. Wo- there's nothing bad about working with Netflix because I want to work with them again. Oh. <laughs> 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 the good things. Uh, yeah, I just uh, missed that one. Um, the good thing with working with Netflix is uh, obviously like Netflix. And uh, like, so uh, there's a person called Akash who works in Netflix. His name is Cash mm-hmm. on Delivery. Akash Ayer. Uh, Akash Ayer, yeah. So he um, is the one who actually gave my big break, and that came through Netflix. Like it changed mm-hmm. my life. Uh, where I genuinely think, and that time there was there wasn't like I think there were like two three people uh, creators working in Netflix. So we were like mm-hmm. one of the first. Um, and he gave me an opportunity to do something with my grandma, which I'd always cherish, mm-hmm. uh, because like. Like she's not there anymore, but like I yeah. like always look back at that and think, "Oh fuck, we did something amazing!" Like that was that was something really cool that I got that much time with my grandmom to do something like that together, and mm-hmm. it's forever documented, which means I can go back and see, see it anytime. So Netflix gave me that opportunity, and Netflix genuinely changed my life. Like till then, I was like, "Am I good at this? Should I be doing this?" There was a lot mm-hmm. of self doubt, and then when Akash backed me and, and Netflix backed me, I was like, "Okay." Like I didn't know the value of it at that time, mm-hmm. uh, but that genuinely changed my life. Like it was just a message. Like Akash is like, bro, I really like your videos. Do you want to come to Bombay with your grandmom and uh, do this react show? And I'm like, bro, you really think I'm gonna say no to this? Of course I would. Like, <laughs> and I just told my grandmom, and she's like, yeah, fuck yeah. And Netflix really <laughs> takes care of you also. So hmm. they really take care of you. Like when you're shooting, when you're staying there, they're really nice about that. What was your grandmother's reaction to it? Because I'm sure earlier you were shooting at home, yeah, in a setting with just both of you, and then you go to Bombay and you have this set with all these camera people. What was that reaction for her like? So there is this misconception that my grandma, like at least this is what she would tell people. She tell people that she hated this and she would just do, help do this to help her grandson. Uh-huh. But she loved every single moment of it because like we were like besties. Mm-hmm. Like, and we were like those besties who are not very really nice to each other. You know, you you're, you're like really nice <laughs> to your good friends, but you're really mean to your bestie. Yeah. Because uh, they they are the only people who really know you. Mm-hmm. So he she used to love every moment of it. Like like there will be days when if something's not happening, she'd be like, "Why we are not shooting today? Why nobody Netflix <laughs> Netflix only chill." Uh, <laughs> or or you know that time like I wasn't doing so much work, so he's like. Can't you just get a job at Netflix? Like, just do some work there. Like, she wants to like <laughs> make make me do like accounting there. Uh, uh, but also, like, it was really funny. Like, that also happened by chance. Like, I used to like even in twenty fourteen fifteen, I used to record videos with her, and it, like I never used to upload. And then, then when I started uploading, I just used to upload just like that, just so that my other family and friends could see it. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a video we did with Game of Thrones, which did really well, and like people would stop her in like temples and say. So this time, that there was a time when she didn't know I was uploading. Okay. okay. So then she'd be like, "People are coming and talking to me and asking me about some fucking video. What the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing with all this?" <laughs> huh. So that's how she got to know. And then she's like a celebrity. She like she like 
she would wave at people and right? she would like stand for photos and like yeah she was really good at that stuff yeah but she, and- she like there was a it was a big transition for her because like when we went for the netflix show there were like 40 people on set and mm. before that it was just me and my phone and her yeah so there was a process learning curve where, curve where like you know she had to become comfortable i had to co- become comfortable so yeah that that process we went through but very quickly yeah because she's so natural in all of those videos she's brilliant and there's one bit where y'all are dancing also in the end yeah, in one of yeah, the videos yeah 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 she's a, she's a like she's a natural she's like a people's person like she's very charismatic so like everybody on set would love her and yeah it was it was a it was a great experience yeah and yeah. i'm also like glad we we i mean i didn't know her personally but we got to experience that as well yeah yeah and yeah. got to know her through that so that was really nice thanks for okay. saying that <laughs> third question um, this question is from vishi okay uh, are you and shamali dating are we dating i don't know are we <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you watch the vlogs why don't you tell me buddy <laughs> mm. what what's up with this whole mystery of who is dating who who is you know i don't know it's good, it's good for views i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> keep them guessing uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah yeah keep keep guessing because I don't know, one day you might just see like an engagement or a wedding and then you'd be like, oh yeah, they were always dating or maybe they weren't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anything could happen. Or your audience will be like, this is another prank. We know uh, it. It's not yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a great prank though. I've thought about it, but <laughs> I haven't executed it so far. <laughs> but yeah. All, all right. We have come to the end of this podcast. It was so awesome. nice chatting with you. It was so yeah, much dude. fun. All of you who are watching slash listening to this podcast, uh, check out Sharon's socials we've spoken so much about his youtube channel you definitely have to subscribe to it now i'll put the links in the description thank you so much sharon and all the best in dubai thank bye. you so much dude it was so much fun thank you bye thank you so much for listening in if you liked this episode then please leave a rating on whatever platform you listen to this on so that it will help me get discovered by more listeners New episodes of Chuma Conversations with your favorite content creators will be out every Wednesday. So make sure you click on that follow or subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode when it comes out. Have a great week ahead. Bye.